Hispanic Lifestyle is pleased to have the support of Wells Fargo Bank. For more information, visit their website at wellsfargo.com. With roughly 60 million Latinos in the U.S., we highlight Latinas of influence, businesses surviving to thrive. We talk culture, travel, health, wellness, music, entertainment, and of course, food. Our passion is to share inspiring stories with the community. I'm Richard Sandoval, and this is Hispanic Lifestyle. I'm Julian Canetti. I'm president and CEO of the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce. Um, the, the chamber is a statewide organization of over 105 local Hispanic chambers and diverse business associations uh, throughout the state, uh, representing Hispanic business, over the over 815,000 Hispanic businesses, of course, uh, but also small business in general as well. How are the Hispanic Chambers of Commerce doing in the state of California? You know, Hispanic chambers throughout California, I, I, I think, are, are growing. Um, you know, through the state chamber, um, one of our priorities is building capacity uh, within our local chambers because we understand that they're where the rubber meets the road, and they're the ones that that are able to provide direct services to our constituents out there. So we've been doing a lot to to improve the capabilities of our local chambers, from leadership programming to um, to programming on on you know fund development, volunteer management, et cetera. So again, we're seeing our chambers grow. We're seeing more participation from our chambers. Uh, we just recently. Um, engage our chambers uh, in the California Relief Grant Program and where we did some regranting, and we had almost, you know, over 50% of them participate in that program, which I think is important for us to show because now we're showing how effective our chambers are as being an outreach tool out there in the community and, and being able to communicate, not just to the business community, but the community as a whole. You know, I know one of the things the organization does extremely well is advocacy. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, I, I personally believe now more than ever, we need somebody talking to our elected officials, yeah. explaining our story, advocating for us as small businesses. Can you talk a little bit about your activities in that area? Sure. But let me start with, you know, advocacy is from the local level at your local city council, school boards, all the way up the state legislator, all the way to, to Washington, D.C. and Congress. So we've been doing a lot of work on educating and training our chambers to be advocates, especially at that local level. Now, at the state level, there's a lot of stuff going on, as you said, you know, from still regulating business um, and putting some onerous regulations on small business. Uh, but also, you know, with, with the COVID pan pandemic, also we're still concentrating on recovery efforts to assist our businesses. And, you know, one of those things that we advocated for was the California Relief Grant. You know, we we had told the governor and the legislature that last thing our businesses need to do is be put further in debt, right? You know, I think this low interest loan is fine, but, you know, in a year later, they've got to pay it off, start paying it. And we, we kept on arguing that, that one of the things that we needed was grants, you know, forgivable grants or for, forgivable loans for our small businesses. So again, that's, that's, I think, where we were effective in advocating. And, you know, the governor uh, had, had gotten uh, $2 billion, plus he's now got another $1.5 billion that's pending on the, the budget to be approved. Uh, again, for the California Relief Grant, we advocated for the California Rebuilding Fund, where the state put up $100, 000, $100, $100 um, million uh, for that loan program to be leveraged with a public, in a pri public-private uh, partnership. Uh, but then there's also just the regulations that just make it harder to do business in California. And we continue to fight those. We continue to bring them to the attention of the, of the legislators. But, you know, we have the bad with the good. So, um, but we keep the fight up and, and, and we continue to support those bills that we feel are, are, are good and, and, and grow our small businesses in California. You know, we have an ongoing theme with our BizCon event. Uh, I know you've participated in with them in the past in person, but the ongoing theme is surviving to thrive. Uh, can you give me a little bit of a state of Hispanic businesses right now? And hopefully it's an optimistic point of view. Yeah, you know, I think so. I think, you know, 
um, we've been working with businesses throughout the state on, on getting number one through the pandemic, right? But more importantly, is, is really concentrating on how do we continue to make them successful even after p- the pandemic? Um, we've learned a lot from the pandemic, uh, some of the things that are missing um, with our business owners. And, and so again, that's, that's where we've, we, we've started to concentrate. Uh, you know, how do we make our businesses more resilient? Um, not just in this, not, not in just this pandemic or disasters, but in, 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 in future years uh, when, you know, we don't know what's going to hit, right? Whether it's a fire, whether it's an earthquake, whatever it may be. So, you know, I think Hispanic business has been very optimistic about the, um, um, through this pandemic. Um, you know, as we talk to businesses, they are seeing, you know, business picking up, um, you know, from the restaurants to other businesses. You know, we've talked to businesses saying, hey, we're doing better now than we did, uh, um, um, you know, uh, two years ago, a year ago. So again, uh, you know, Hispanic business is just very resilient, as you know, uh, Richard. And, um, you know, uh, they get a roadblock in front of them, you know, they just knock it down, climb over it or go around it, right? Um, but they continue to grow. Um, you know, Hispanics are still the fastest growing segment uh, of, of small business as well. You know, I, I know you guys have some upcoming events. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? But before you mention that, how does one become a member of a Hispanic Chamber of Commerce? The question I used to always get asked was, do you need to be Hispanic to be a member of a Hispanic Chamber? As we've said, you know, uh, no need to habla, right? Um, you know, the Hispanic Chambers are open to everybody. You know, we just did our LGBTQ plus initiative uh, this week as well uh, to be, again, more inclusive. And, and I'm proud to say that the Hispanic Chamber Networks, the state chamber and our local chambers, you know, before it was hip to do inclusivity, we were doing it, right? We were welcoming women. We were welcoming the LGBT community. You know, with, within the, the state chamber network, we've got a diverse group of, of chambers as well, Asian and African-American uh, uh, Indian, uh, South Asian, Indian, et cetera. So, you know, we've been practicing that, that whole concept. Um, but, you know, if someone wants to become a member and, and get the benefits of the state chamber, all you got to do is join your local chamber. Um, you know, in the Empire, we've got the Greater Riverside Chamber. Uh, we've got the chamber in Corona. Um, we've got the, Sam, uh, the uh, Couchilla Chamber now out there as well. Uh, Inland Empire, uh, Regional Chamber, so, um, so again, you know, if you join a local chamber, you get their benefits, plus you get all of our benefits that, that, um, that we provide them as well. I know you mentioned two things that are near and dear to my heart being located in the Inland Region, um, the Inland Empire and uh, the Coachella Valley. Sure. So do you guys have any activities coming up in the next few months in my particular area? Sure. You know, um, in, in July, we'll be down there in Coachella Valley. We'll be in, uh, in Indian Wells, um, and we'll be having a board meeting there. Um, and we'll have a kickoff reception for our uh, annual convention, which actually is going to be held there in, 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 in the Palm Springs area, um, September 9th through the 12th. And I invite everybody to participate there. If they want more information, they can go to www.cahcc.com. Uh, for more registration area, but we, we have a number of, of other events coming up that are, are being scheduled out, um, such as uh, procurement workshops or Elevate program, um, where we um, are working to make businesses not just to introduce them to contracting opportunities, but making sure our businesses, our Hispanic businesses or our diverse businesses are also competitive, right? I can, you know, I, I've, I've told our team that we can certify businesses you know, for contracts, and they could have all the qualifications, but our businesses need to be competitive to be able to win that contract, because some of these contracts are by, won by a couple hundred dollars. So, you know, our, our procurement program called Elevate really concentrates on making those businesses much more competitive, and that'll be coming to, to the Inland Empire in a couple months. We're just trying to secure a location and some dates. You know, I know uh, we're a little bit limited on time, but uh, I wanted to give you the last word and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Can you give a little piece of advice? You've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this a long time, (laughs) but what is that piece of advice that just really has been able to sustain itself uh, 
throughout the many years we've been doing this. Did you feel comfortable sharing with uh, business owners and professionals and colleagues? Yeah, why why we do what we do. And I think, I I won't say when Richard and I first met and how long we've known each other, but um, it's been a long time, right, Richard? Um, But, you know, I think for for guys like us, Richard, it's it's a love, right? It's a love of, of saying, how can we help the business community, right? How can we educate the business community? How can we make them better? You know, so many of our businesses sometimes lack knowledge, and, 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 you know, companies like yours, programs like yours, bring that knowledge to them. And, and that's just what the chamber does too. And I think that's what we all love the most is, is, is being able to know that, that we brought a, a little bit more knowledge to our business owners that will make them a little bit more successful in, in what they do. But, you know, for guys like you and I, you know, as you know, this is a true love. That's why we, we're still engaged in, in, in what we do. Me with the chambers, you with Hispanic lifestyle. I, I mean, it's a love for it, right? And but I think the bottom line is is the love and the and the commitment to helping small businesses and helping our communities and making a better quality of life in California in general. Well, again, thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon. Yeah. And uh, always good a luck to you in the future, man. Appreciate well, it. I'm, and and we'll, we'll be seeing you down there. And uh, and um, you know, uh, we always look forward to to seeing uh, what's what's new on Hispanic lifestyle. And of course, with your BizCon events and your other events, uh, they're, they're fantastic venues, um, you know, for businesses to, to go to and, and learn and, you know, and learn how to be more successful and, and what has happened, new trends, et cetera. So we appreciate what you do as well, Richard. Hey, thanks again, Julian. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Didn't get enough? There's always more at HispanicLifestyle.com. And follow us on your favorite social media platform.